So you want to build yourself a candy claw machine. Hey everyone, Chris here, and you might have seen the Candy Claw machine at Earth 2022. The Candy Claw was built and designed just for Earth this year. It is as close to a 3D printer as you can get, and still being a claw machine. It uses all NEMA 17 motors, it has a ramps board, and it's running Marlin firmware with just a few tweaks. We had a lot of fun with the claw machine and all the people that played it at Earth, but the claw machine did not make it back to the basement with us. We actually gave it to the good people over at 3D Gloop, so they can use it for their presentations. But there were a lot of folks wanting to know whether I'd make content on the claw machine or not, so I thought I'd take a crack at building another one. Now, the one that we had at Earth is what I'm calling version 0.09. It is available on GitHub, but please don't build that one. It was a bare essentials machine just to get us up and running so we could go to Earth and show it off. This is what I'm calling version 0.1. It's much improved, easier to print, a lot less different types of hardware. So if you're looking into building one of these, definitely make sure you're looking at this version. All of this will be shared out there on GitHub. I even have a few more ideas to put into it before we actually reach version 1.0. So stay tuned for that. But that's what this video series is going to be all about. I'm going to walk you through step by step how I build one of these machines. And the most important part to remember about this build is this is not a 3D printer. We're using a lot of printed parts. It doesn't have to be accurate at all. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the project and selecting the parts that you use. So we're going to jump right into this build and we're going to start building the frame for the machine, getting all the extrusion cut so that we can build our skeleton and get going on our candy claw. So let's go. So to get us started, we need a frame. This build requires nine one meter in length 2020 extrusions. Now you're not going to use all of it, but to get the height and the width that I want, this is what I went with. Now, a lot of the dimensions that I'm using for this build are because of these one meter lengths and the printer volume, but we'll talk about that a little more as we get the frame assembled. Now we need to cut all of this. So we're going to head out to the shed. We need four 440 millimeter pieces, four 470 millimeter pieces, four 730s for the verticals, and one 530 for the X gantry. We'll go ahead and cut that one. We'll use that on a later video. I like to just measure these out with my tape. I get the measurement really close and then I'll put a scratch on the extrusion with a screwdriver and all if you have one. And then when I cut them, I get them close to the size that I want and then I usually pair them up and shave off a little bit at a time so that I can get them equal lengths. Since this really isn't a 3D printer, they don't have to be 100% exact but they should be at least close to each other. The closer you get, the easier the build's gonna be. And now we cut. I'm gonna narrate this to save you the noise from the miter saw. I use a non-ferrous metal cutting blade. I'll leave a link to that in the description, but it gets a nice cut. Just make sure your saw is calibrated, all the rules to follow when using a miter saw. But I like to cut them, I'll remeasure, and then I'll just nibble off piece by piece to get to my final length. I cut them a couple of times, usually three cuts to get it in. Of course, I measure along the way. But remember what I said before, it's really not so much about them being accurate as they are being consistent. If they're consistent, the build's gonna go a lot easier. You need them pretty close to the specs to use those printed parts, but as long as they're close to each other, you can usually make it work. And it never hurts if you have a sander that you can sand them flat on the edge. That'll keep the sharp edges down. The blade does a pretty good job, but you do end up with a few spurs here and there. That will help them be consistent as well when you're putting them together. Even if you just have some sandpaper or a file, that's going to help the process greatly. And the cutting is complete. These are all the scraps that are left over. Again, you're going to use most of all nine pieces, but you could probably do something with this if you really wanted to. But we have our 440s, four of them, four 470s, four 730s, and that one 530 that we're going to use for X. This will be in a couple videos from now. To make this somewhat easy to assemble, I bought these corner brackets. They're made to hold three pieces together. You just use set screws. This isn't the cheapest route to go, but it is a quick solution. And it's pretty polished when you get it all together. All these corners are going to be covered up by plastic parts anyway. 
You could use blind screws, you could thread the ends, whatever you wanted to do. I just chose to go this route. And just to help keep our part list straight, we have all the extrusion I just mentioned, and we have eight of these corner brackets. Mine did come with set screws to assemble it. Now we'll start building the frame. So the goal here for our frame is we want it 480 millimeters on the outside. These corner pieces, they add five millimeters on each side. So we're gonna take our 470 piece and the part with the two prongs is gonna go into that extrusion. And then the single prong will go on the outside of that 440. And both will be built the same with this prong facing up. One will be the top, one will be the bottom. They're identical. But move around to the other side. Again, this is our 440 piece. One prong facing up, one going into the 440. And just put your set screw on. And then the two prong side of that bracket goes into your other 470. And we just add our other 440 piece on the other side, exactly like we did that side. This one's done. Now it's a great time to get your tape out and make sure your measurements are correct. Our frame, again, should be 480 on the outsides. And this one is really, really close. So we're looking good. Now we wanna build another one of these exactly like it. So now we have our two frames. All we have to do is connect them with our vertical pieces. And they'll just slide into all these pegs, just like this. We can put a set screw, and then we can put the top on. The uprights are on, now all we gotta do is line up the top. And it'll set on just like this. Then we can put our set screws in. So there's the basic frame, and there's a couple reasons why I went with these dimensions. Now as far as the height goes, I just thought this would be a good size for a candy claw machine. But the outside being 480, 480, the first reason is we have these one meter aluminum extrusions. That seems to be the cheapest way to buy these extrusions. So the longest piece being 470, that gives you a little wiggle room. You can get two pieces out of one section, and in case you messed it up just a bit, you could recover. Also, the 3D printed parts. I wanted all of these larger parts. They're four big pieces that make the base of this machine. I wanted you to be able to print those on a 300 by 300 3D printer. So something like a CR10. 350, 350 would be even better, but you should be able to get by. And now we have a ton of 3D printing to do to make all of those parts. Also, we're gonna have to do a little bit of wiring because as soon as we put that base together, we're gonna have to have that wiring done because it's going to conceal it. So let's get back to the build. So we're gonna knock out a little bit of wiring here real quick because we do have to run that through our frame before we proceed. Now these are the wires that are gonna control the joystick and the button module. You're gonna need six lengths. I make them two meters long each just so we have a little bit of slack to get us from the controller box all the way up the frame to the main board. Now the main board I'm going to use is ramps. It's all pin style connectors, so I'm going to use DuPont connectors for these. So I'm just going to put a female on both ends, and then we can figure it out after we hook it up to the controller and the main board. The controller side will end up being male pins in there. So I'm going to go ahead and do all that ahead of time, and then we can run it through the frame. I'll show you how to do one real quick, then you can do the rest of them. Now this is all 30 gauge silicone wire. I just got it off of Amazon. I only have five colors. It would be nice to have all six, but 30 gauge is thick enough to do what we're gonna do and it fits on the DuPont connector really nicely. Since I only had the five colors, I just took an extra yellow piece and marked it with a Sharpie with a black stripe so I at least know what wire goes where. And with the 30 gauge silicone wire, you shouldn't even have to strip the end. You should be able to just crimp that DuPont connector on there and that will give you continuity on both ends. I have good luck with this and it saves a step. I like this jaw style of crimper. For the 30, I just usually use this second rung here. The outside is a little bigger, so you can have those tabs in there. I just place the pin in, the longer tab on the outside. You can even give it one click to put it into place. And then you can slide your wire in. You don't need to push it in too far. You can kind of judge from the other side you just want to make sure that the wire makes it into that second set of prongs because that's what's actually going to cut into the wire and make the connectivity. You can see it from the back side. It's in on this side just far enough. And then you can go ahead and crimp it. Your crimp should look something like this. You see there's not too much squeezed out the end, but enough in there to make a solid connection. 
and now I've got 11 more connections to go. Okay, so we're going to get a little bit of wiring out of the way to make this whole assembly a lot easier. If you forget this step, it's really annoying to have to go back and do it later. I know. So this is the front of the machine. So you're going to have your controller over here, your candy chute is going to be over here. The wire needs to run past all of the plastic shroud pieces, and I like to put it on the inside here rather than the top because you're going to have some T-nuts that lay on the top track here. So it's going to go on the inside. So we're over here running to the controller box. We're going to go inside that. And now I'm going to spin the whole thing 180 so I can show you how I put these wires in the track. I'm actually using some 3D printed parts. I found these over on Thingiverse and I just made them in different lengths. These were created by Anton Musterman. Thanks, Anton. I'll leave a link to these and everything, of course. But these are around 210 millimeters. Remember, the inside of these are going to be around 440. So there's going to be a little bit of gap. But let me spin it around. I'll show you these in practice. So from the back of the machine, remember the controller is going to be over in here. Here's our wires. And here's our printed piece holding those in here. Now, the big thing you need to watch out for is pinching those wires in the corner. Right there. I highly suggest you take one of these and you run it all the way down to the corner to protect it and then you take another one and do the same thing on this side. I just like to pull the wires up, get them put together and then slide this actually on the wire and then you can follow it down into the track. And then if you get them both pushed up in the corner that keeps them nice and protected. Remember it's only 30 gauge, it's pretty easy to cut it and this extrusion can be rather sharp. You want to stay protected. So then we can just work it down and do another piece right here. And if you're going to leave a gap, remember this is going to be covered. You can leave it in the middle. It's more important to keep it protected on the corners. And then from here, we need to go up vertical, headed towards where the controller board is going to be. On this version of the claw machine, the controller board is going to be on the top left side rather than in the back on the original one. But I'm just going to run it up this extrusion with those same printed parts. There's one for the bottom. We do have some wires just out here. You could develop a little corner piece if you wanted to, but it stays put pretty well. You shouldn't have to worry about it. And we'll just keep working up this extrusion. There's one for the center section. And then one for the top section there. We're going to print another small one to get us up to about there, but it's going to exit the machine not quite all the way to the top of the frame. Also, print these with PETG. I think it helps, makes them just a little bit more flexible than PLA. They fit really nice. Now that we've got our controller wires out of the way, we can go ahead and put on the base. These are the four sections that are 3D printed that enclose it. This is where all the candy is going to be held so that you can grab it. It just goes on with a couple of M5 screws. I'll show you how. And just so we can keep our parts inventory up to date, we have all of our pieces. This is the front left where the candy chute is. Then you have the front right, this is where the controller attaches on, and then you have the two back pieces. There's really nothing special about the back pieces, but they are just a little bit different, so print them accordingly. We also have a couple of trap pieces, or that's what I call them. It just allows it to be easier to assemble with that aluminum frame, and then you can put these down over it to keep any candy from spilling out around the chute. Also, I have five feet. I printed these out of TPU. I use Ninja Flex. We'll put those on, they go on the bottom, and then we have a square washer. I use this in the center just to add just a little bit more stability. And then as far as the hardware goes, we'll need all M5 by 10 millimeter screws, 12 for the base piece, and some T-nuts. I'm using roll-in T-nuts for this whole build because I think they're easier to use. Three M5 by 10 millimeters. These are for the two trap pieces, as well as two T-nuts for those, and then one for the center foot and a hex nut for that center foot as well. So I'm just going to put all of our 12 T-nuts in place on the frame. You can kind of line them up with your printed parts after you get them on there. You'll want them in around this position three times. One for each corner piece, so I'll go ahead and put the other nine in. And once all the T-nuts are in, then we can start placing our printed parts. This is really the only one, the one with the chute, that's kind of tricky to get in there. You have to wiggle it around just a bit to get around that well for the candy, but it's not that difficult. I usually just like to set it on there so that I can get the T-nuts relatively close to where they need to be.
And then once you have the nuts lined up, you can just slide it the rest of the way on. And once your part's on there, then you can go ahead and add your bolts. Again, mind that wire. You don't want it getting pinched, but since we covered it, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. It should be out of the way. And the bolt for the corner section here will go in one of your TPU feet and it'll just screw on. And then we can put in the other two. And you do want to put the front two sections on first. The back two will have to go on at the same time because of how they press fit. So we've got the front left one on. We'll do the same thing for the front right. They just slide in and fit together. And then same way for this side, we're just gonna put on our rubber foot and the other two bolts. And for the back two pieces, again, you're gonna to wanna to put those together, then put them on. You know which one's which because the feet, the round hole here for the foot goes towards the back, not to the side. So you can just slide that foot together for both of those pieces and then slide the whole thing on. And then you're good to put your screws in. So all the screws and feet are in except the center one. We can go ahead and put that on. It's just like the other four, except we have that printed part that gets loaded with a hex nut to go on the other side. That just helps give it a little bit more stability when it's setting on the table. There's a look at that printed nut on the top. And then around our candy well, like I said before, we have trap pieces. This is just to keep candy from coming into the well when you dump it in. They just set in here like this, and they'll go on with an M5 by 10 and a T-nut into that extrusion down here. So we can screw the one down for this side, and then we have another one that fills in the hole over here on this side. And our base section is complete. So there we go. We're off to a good start on our candy claw machine. We've got pretty much the frame done. We've got our base section all together. There was a lot of 3D printing involved here. Each one of these sections on my 3D printer took around a day and a half to print. So keep that in mind. That is with a 0.2 layer height. I will share all of my settings over on GitHub as well in case you need to know how to print these items. Now, next video, we are going to be tackling the gantry. Everything on top that makes it move in the X and Y to be able to make that crane motion. So that will be it for today. I'll see you really soon on the next one.